Hello guys, welcome to another episode. This is GAC Podcast and today's episode is going to be on profitability of raising layers for eggs or broilers for meat. Which would you prefer? Because most times a lot of people are, would I say, bemused, is that the right word to use? Or would I say confused about which do I go for? I want to be a poultry farmer. I don't know, do I want the egg or do I want the meat? Where is my market? What do I want? And then that should not get you confused. As on today's episode, we will talk about, we would um, talk about factors that you need to consider when making that decision. And then you will know which of them would favor you in your location, in your market, in your, your segment, with your customer base. All that you would make that decision for yourself today. So please, I want to also use the opportunity to apologize to all for not dropping an episode two Saturdays back and last Saturday simply because of the flooding. I know if some of you are following me on social media at the talkative on Instagram and on Facebook, I posted that I was flooded. My house, not me. <laughs> I can't be flooded. And my house was flooded you know the cameroon dam that was opened affected nigeria and my area was also affected we currently moved into that place i currently moved into that place into the estate and it was all flooded i had to leave for my life my properties are still there i don't know how they're doing i don't know my kidding is there oh my god i don't know if he's dead right now so that's just it that's a major basic reason why i haven't dropped an episode but currently i am getting myself stable where i am now so i decided to drop an episode for us all and it's on the topic layers or broilers farm which would you prefer So before making that decision, like I said before, it's important that you put several factors into consideration. Now, picking if to go for layers, raising them for eggs or broilers for the meat production is not the issue. But the fact is there are factors that vary within those two businesses. Their poultry is quite all right, but they have varying factors such as um, location, market demand, managerial skills, initial investment. Considering these things, you will know if you are to go for the meat or the egg and some other factors. So we're going to break it down for layers and then we'll break down for broilers and then you will know how or which to go for depending on your location. layers are basically for egg production all right so whichever you're going for i've been there okay i've actually been privileged to be in the layer production business not basically me but worked there for about two years consecutively and i will tell you that layers and broilers they might seem like the same business but the market is totally different entirely all right, the mode of management is entirely different. The, the skill set required is the same. If you know how to handle them, if you are in the poultry space for broilers, you should know how to handle layers at least to a great length. Although there's a little bit of difference. But we're going to consider first the layers. Now, layers produce steady income, right? They provide relatively steady and consistent source of income because of the eggs you know you're getting eggs every day some people um depending on your number of eggs probably your number of um layers the breed you're going for hisa brown whichever hisa brown is the most is the most um would i say the most open the most farmed in lagos and the ones is basically the one i've had encounter with it's a light breed now it gives eggs on a daily basis and sometimes they don't lay but if you have them in large quantity you're able to get consistent production all right you're able to get consistent production so when you have those layers in your farm producing yes you're getting steady income depending on your number of layers if you have like five thousand of them you can be getting about 100 crates of eggs depending on your managerial activity so that is just a steady flow of income is one advantage of going for layers second is the market demand now egg have a consistent demand in most markets 
all right making it re a reliable source of revenue now you tell me you won't tell me that the mesuya that is would i call it mesuya let me not use what mesuya let me say that um shy Meshai, is it Meshai? <laughs> what do they call those 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 malam that stay on the street beside a tent and during cold weather they make hot tea with bread and egg for for passersby for passersby whichever. I'm not doing English class yet. So what do they call them? And those people make use of crates of egg per day. Now those are consumables. They're consuming it, and as such, they would buy more. So that is consistent. Is a reliable source of revenue. Okay. So layers also provide longer lifespan. Yes, it does. It does. Layers can produce eggs for several years. Basically, two to three years, they can keep producing for you. That is potentially extending your return on investment. That is if you manage them well, though. Yes, if well managed, they can extend your return on investment to a larger level. Lastly, layers have less feed costs. You incur lesser feed costs. Now, layers generally consume less feed compared to broilers. That is because they don't put on fat that much. They don't put on excess fat. They aren't meant to even put on excess fat. If your layers put on excess fat, then that's a problem. So they aren't meant to put on excess fat as such. They consume less feed compared to broilers and that lowers your feed cost. then let's come over to broilers broilers are meant for meat production as we all know you know for the festive season you need a chicken to slaughter it's broilers and when you price a spent layer that is a layer that has exhausted its eggs in the market and you price a broiler and you even weigh them <laughs> If you price a broiler, a fully grown broiler, for the price you're, you're actually asking a spent layer for, uh -huh. in the Yoruba market woman you meet for, for, for that market, she go cost you tire. <laughs> for you to know that there is a big difference. Even your, your gods won't let you price them the same. So you would know that broilers are more weighty because they, they are grown for meat. They are grown to fatten they are being fattened to produce meat that is just their main reason for being grown so broilers faster turn around yes six weeks broilers have started being sold mm -hmm. from six weeks while i was in ocean state levensis foundation agricultural school i had we, we we sold from four weeks from four weeks we had people coming to peak to raise to six weeks to actually sell or to um, butcher we have those restaurants that are coming most restaurants come for six weeks broilers so at six weeks you started getting your 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 cash back all right broilers have a shorter lifespan and faster growth rate compared to layers and allowing for quicker turnover and profit realization so between six to eight weeks to ten weeks you already sell off that is if you have a ready market okay that is why most of the broiler farmers that are producing for a certain amount of um, certain company that's if you're starting and you know this company booked you or this the this, this, this restaurants have booked you this eateries have booked you okay um every month we would be needing or every two two months we will be needing probably a hundred kilogram of chicken and you're getting that th that um request or that order from like five or six different eateries you know you're in business mm -hmm. you you're, you started your business and with that you're able to produce consistently because those eateries are going to continue serving food to people and the chicken will not that is eating will not return back to life it goes and another has to be produced so if you're in the broiler business in that kind of setting then you're in business i we, we went for a tour um, towards our end of the program there and we met with some of their past students who were who finished with them 2006 and those guys are really doing well imagine one of them is raising 12,000 broilers 12,000 and they don't exceed six weeks and they have to put on at least two kilogram the least of them should not be less than 1.8 kg that's put on two kg within that six weeks before they can be sold not even sold they already have a market all of them already have where they're going to so it's just for those people to come pick them up and they've paid already so it's on that uh, um, capital is on that pay that they are being raised all right it's on the pay they are being raised and most times some people have that that raise for me they already have a signed contract we will come pick up and pay you 
So if you're doing that with broilers, you're going to make so much money, faster turnaround on that basis. Second is high demand. Now, meat from broilers has a very high demand because of the fatty content and because of the fleshy content. Now, um, in regions where strong poultry markets is, then if you're doing broilers, you're going to have high returns on investment. Thirdly, we have less time intensive. Yes, broilers require less long-term management compared to layers. Unlike layers that you have to manage for two years, two years plus, before you sell off the spent layers, or probably you have uh, um, 27 weeks, um, 17, 18, 19, 20 weeks before you start seeing eggs. Uh, and even when you start seeing them initially, you start seeing them in smaller quantities. And you tend to be like, why are you giving me one egg? What will I see in among 5,000 birds? I'm seeing you're starting to lay, you're giving me two crates of egg, three crates of egg on the third day, four crates of egg on the fifth day. Oh my God. Now, the only thing is the production upscales for layers. But for broilers, they give you, um, they have less time management. So they give you weight. They give you weight. You're seeing your money growing in them already. And that keeps you smiling. <laughs> People that are going to the bank. Okay. And it is the initial profit for starting broilers is not as much as the layers. That is, if market conditions are favorable, you can potentially see your quicker returns on investment with broilers. Yes, since you're not spending lo much time feeding your broilers, you are feeding them within a shorter space of time. So you actually have lower um, time, lower time, shortened time to see your, your returns on investment with broilers. So when you're running a broiler business and you think, if you're thinking if it's profitable, if you're a person, a person that you cannot or you don't think you are patient enough to wait for the layers, then the broiler business is for you. In conclusion, whether you're choosing or whether you want to go for layers or broilers, it's all your choice. It depends on your goals. It depends on your local market. It depends on your ability to manage each type of poultry. So which do you or are you proficient with? Which do you know how to manage better? Which do you have more trainings with? Which have you managed before? Which did you, do you have more success with? I have most people, one of our lecturers then, does not want to do anything layers he doesn't even want to hear about layers his market is on broilers he has been doing broilers and he's growing with broilers so he has stuck to broilers and that is what makes his money for him and i also have one that i started layers and that is what he just wants to do he doesn't see any growth with broilers he just wants to do layers so it all depends on your ability to manage which works for you which have you who do you have more knowledge on so some poultry farmers opt uh, opt for actually a combination of the both because I have one to one of the accidents that do layers. I think he said he has, um, is he 11,000 broilers and they have over 7,000 layers in different compartments. Layers aren't, aren't of the same age, but combined together, they are 7,000. So some combine them, not in the same housing. Lots of space are given in between, but some combine, some combine them. So some poultry farmers opt for a combination of the both. Um, to actually diversify their income streams and it's essential to conduct a feasibility study first assess the market demand and consider your resources and skills before you actually make this decision whether to go for layers or broilers and both layers and broilers can actually be very very lucrative they can be profitable when you manage them effectively so i am not making your decision today i'm just telling you the advantages of each and then you get to select looking word looking into yourself ask yourself some questions which can i do better this or this then make your decision and when you make your decision which do i have more money for which can i wait for am i that patient am i not that patient how long do i actually want what is my target market when you ask yourself such questions then you're able to tell if you're going for the layers or the broilers Whichever poultry farming remains ever profitable once you have your market demand and your actually your business goes well. You have the set skills to actually get it started and run it effectively. Once you have that, it's a very profitable venture. All right, guys, this is the wrap for today's episode on GAC Podcast. Your con, um, would I say, your your one-stop shop for everything agriculture. 
one stop shop <laughs> whichever <laughs> your 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 first bus stop to everything agriculture ranging from training to 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 farm life experiences to whatever concerns agriculture is what we talk here is what we we talk here to keep our passion alive to keep uh 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 uh, 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 uh would i say to keep the the fire of agriculture burning this is agricultural agricultural news <laughs> not news but it's actually a platform where we preach the gospel preach the farm spell of agriculture <laughs> all right uh, all right guys all right guys thank you so much for joining in do not forget hit on the subscribe button because you have more things to benefit from today's or from our subsequent episodes from um farm or the farmer's voice which we started but has actually halted a bit but it's going to start again and it's going to continue where we get farmers to relate their experiences and how farming has been with them to so, question and answer sessions that we're going to be introducing and we're going to be running with our podcast episodes and please the comment session where are you listening from where do you listen from and if you've listened to this point it means you really got value subscribe like share it to other farmers and let them know what they're missing for not being part of GAC podcast thanks so much once more and enjoy the rest of your day